Who's struggling with something today? You're at the right place. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, the present or the future, nor powers or height or depth or anything in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. And then the last verse I want to read here, just one verse out of Ephesians. This is probably the most important verse of the morning. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. Verse 12, For our struggle... For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers of dark, this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. I want to preach this morning on what I have entitled the struggle, because I've been struggling with some things since last Sunday, and I want to talk about them this morning. We're all struggling with something, right? All of us. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's social. Um, the life, the world we live in, we all struggle with something. I turned, I turned 51 on last Friday. and Or, yeah, last, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm 51, let's just say that. And I think the thought I had on my birthday was how the world has changed since I was a kid. And it's changed so much since I was a little boy and the world just seems so different. And then well, I start to think about people who are older than me, people who are maybe in their, their 80s or in their 90s, how much has the world changed since you were little? <laughs> Brother Kirchhofer, how? <laughs> Or Helm upstairs just had a break. How much has the world changed? If you're, if you're in your, if you're 80 or above, how much has the world changed since you were a kid? Wow, right? The world has, the world has really changed. Um, let's see this. Just raise your hand if you want to. When I ask this, who grew up with no electric? Who grew up when you had to go to the bathroom, you had to put your coat on now and go outside? <laughs> Who had no running water? Wow. Who lived, grew up, or experienced the Great Depression? A lot of you are raising your hand on every question. <laughs> Who grew up riding in a car with no seat belts. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> we didn't use seat belts. When I was a kid, we didn't use seat belts for safety. It's if we bought a big watermelon, we'd put the seat belt around it so it wouldn't <laughs> roll on the floor. <laughs> for those of you who are younger, let me tell you, for those of you who are younger, let me tell you about how it was when I grew up. We grew up out in the country, and people would get lost. We had strangers come to our house, knock on the door, and ask to use our phone, and we let them in. <laughs> we let people who we had no idea who they were into our homes and said, here's our phone, and we had the phones with the cords. You know, we didn't have cordless phones, so they had to go into our kitchen and sit and use our phone, and we just sat there with them. I was raised where you could ride your bike for miles, you could play out in the yard by yourselves, we trusted our neighbors. When did it all change? Throw it out. When did it all change? I don't know. What? Next generation? When, when did it change? Was there a date? Was there an experience? Was there like a world thing that happened? When did it change? that you can't trust people anymore? When did it change? I mean, if somebody came to your, if somebody, if somebody came to your house, Patty Reese, and said, 
I don't know where I'm at. Can I come in and use your phone? We don't let people in our houses to use their phones. But we did. When did it all change? I don't know. I don't know. But let's look at this. Let's look at the struggle, okay? Um, we all struggle with things. We struggle with age. We struggle. Some of us struggle with high blood pressure. I'm one of them. Some of us struggle with cholesterol. I'm one of them. Some of us struggle with medicine, with work. Some of us struggle with people. Some of us struggle with time. Who, can, who in this church just can't be on time no matter what? Oh, good. One person admitted to that. <laughs> One person admitted to that. <laughs> I love the saying when they talk about people, they'll say, oh, my goodness, they're always late. They're going to be late to their own funeral. And I said, good. Everybody be late to your own funeral. In fact, don't even show up, okay? <laughs> don't even show up to your own funeral. Let's look at the bigger picture here. I thought, well, let's, let's find out what the Bible says. Let's, let's go to the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. And I just read it in Ephesians, and here's what it says. It says, your struggle is not against flesh and blood. Your struggle is not against flesh and blood. You know what that means? It means flesh and blood means your struggle is not with people. Your struggle is not with humans. Your struggle is not with people. Your struggle... And I'm thinking to myself, well, how can that be? How can our struggle not be against flesh and blood? Is there anyone here who doesn't struggle with other people? So you all struggle with people from time. You're admitting you all struggle with people from time to time. That's what you're admitting, right? Um, we all do. And here's where sometimes I think we struggle. We say to ourselves things like, Oh, you mean like those people who don't vote like I do? Or, you know, those people over there from Paderborn. <laughs> <laughs> those people. I'm pointing in the right direction, right? Yeah. Can I tell you, can I tell you, can I tell you sometimes... I struggle with people. I struggle with people who can't laugh. If you can't laugh, I struggle sometimes because it's like that's the one common denominator we seem to have in life is we can laugh. I don't say we have to laugh constantly like hyenas, but I'm saying <laughs> you don't have to laugh as much as I laugh. It's okay. Or what about those people at the street lights begging for money? You think they're real? with the cans and say, I'll work, uh, I'm a veteran, I'm a homeless veteran. Do you think they're real? I struggle with that. I struggle with people who don't like Star Wars. <laughs> I struggle with people who have picked on me over the years. I struggle with people who have made fun of me. I struggle with people who made fun of me. When I was a kid, I struggled with my fifth grade teacher who told me I wouldn't amount to anything. <laughs> I struggle with bullies. I struggle with people who pick on others. I struggle with people. I struggle with that. I struggle with people who make fun of us. You know, I struggle with that. I struggle with people. Um, we all struggle with people who are annoying. I was at the assisted living the other day doing the visiting and there were 10 women who lived there and we were all hanging out just talking and they I and they were talking about things that bother them and they and the one said you know Matt what really bothers me she said we have a lady here who's 100 years old and she kisses a man every day and he's 82 She said, why can't she grow up and act her age? <laughs> She's a hundred. A hundred. She said, She's robbing the cradle. He's robbing she's robbing the cradle. <laughs> I said, Rob it, sister. Take it for all it's worth. 
Here's what the Bible says, though. <laughs> Here's what the Bible says. I struggle with this. I struggle with this. Is that the Bible says your struggle is not against flesh and blood. I struggle with that. Because my struggle seems to be with flesh and blood. It seems to be with other people. But the Bible says, oh, no, Matt. Got it wrong. Your struggle is not against flesh and blood. Your struggle is deeper than that. Your struggle is bigger than that. Your struggle, you're, you're zoning in on one little thing. The struggle is bigger. The struggle is broader than what you can even imagine, okay? It's bigger than that. It's bigger than people. The struggle, he said, is, is against rulers and authorities and powers and spiritual forces of evil in dark places. Your struggle, Matt, is not against flesh and blood, the Bible says. God says your struggle is with the powers of evil itself. And the powers of evil are way bigger than the people you're struggling with. Way bigger. You're struggling with something way bigger than you can imagine. So when we see people do such bad things and terrible things and shocking things, it's... Here's what it is. When we, when we see people do terrible things, what, what we have to see is the bigger picture is that they are simply pawns and minions in a much bigger galactic battle between good and evil. So when we see people do terrible things, the first thing we have to get into our minds is there's bigger forces at work here. It's not just one person doing something really bad. It's one person as a minion for something way bigger than you could ever imagine or see. It's a battle between good and evil. And, and when really, like, and I know we're like, and, and this is what so I'm struggling with what's happened last Sunday. Todd Secker is over in the hall giving us a speech on safety as someone's killing people down in Texas at a church. I struggle with that. I struggle with that, okay? I struggle with these things. And I don't know what to do because people have called me and texted me and messaged me and I, I, I don't really know what to do. We struggle, versus, we, we, we struggle versus flesh and blood, but the Bible says that's not your struggle. The struggle is bigger than that. Your struggle is against evil. Your struggle is against the powers of evil. Here is some of our temptations in this struggle. Chuck was open enough to say what he's been struggling with, so, and I have too. That's my closing, actually. Um, here's some of the things I think we're tempted with. Churches aren't safe. I better stop going. Well, you prove them wrong. We're surrounded by such bad news all the time, there's a temptation just to turn negative. And that all we talk about is negative things. Our world is awful, and everything is bad, and our temptation is to turn, to turn negative. Our other temptation is to forget what Jesus taught us and to turn to hate. And we join them in their hate. And we say things we don't usually say or think. And I know for me, there's been times in my life where I've seen and heard about things, and I could almost feel the hate rising in me. You ever get that warm feeling in you when you get angry, and you can almost feel it like bubbling, and it's all right, and you just want to blow? I get that sometimes. I get that sometimes. And I forget, as I'm feeling that, I forget about what Jesus taught us. And I put it to the side almost as if we are now in combat, and I cannot, you know, we're, we're in apocalypse now, and I can't worry about what Jesus said, and that's wrong. And I say things and do things that I usually don't do. And what it is, when you feel that in you, when you feel that hate rising in you, you know what that is? That's not a struggle versus flesh and blood. That's a struggle against something bigger. And it's the powers of evil pulling you in. It's dragging you, it's dragging you, it's dragging you in. And the more you hate, and the more bad things you say, and the more bad things you think, it just keeps pulling you further and further and further in. He wants to pull you away from Jesus, and he wants to get you closer to him, okay? And that's what happens. So what do we do? Here's a couple things we do. We have to remember this. In the Bible days, churches were persecuted all the time. In fact, in the Bible days, if we were in the Bible days, at any moment, the Romans could come get us, drag us out of this building, and feed us to lions. That's how the first Christians worshipped. 
They worshipped every Sunday with the fear that any moment the Romans could come get us and use us as lion bait in the arenas or put us in prison, okay? But you know what the church did to respond to that? It grew stronger. It grew bigger. It flourished. That church in Texas, I read, the pastor said, well, we're going to demolish the old building. Too many bad. But we're rebuilding. We're going to rebuild another building. We're not quitting. We're not stopping. Nobody's going to stop us from being a church. Nobody. The second thing is, when we get surrounded by such bad news, the bad thing is, is that you have to remember, there are far many more good people than bad. Far more. The problem is the bad people get all the press. When's the last time Channel 5 or 4 or 2 led with a story about a Girl Scout selling 10,000 cookies? No, we get a lead story about some other dumb thing the Kardashians did. <laughs> That's always the lead story. If it takes going home and watching Andy Griffith, do it! Or Lucy or Hogan's Heroes or something. What we don't realize is, and the last thing is, we got to keep living what Jesus taught us. Don't give in to the hate. It's so easy. He's pulling you away. He's creating a wedge. I'll close with this. What do we do? I don't know exactly what we do. We listen to whatever Todd Secker tells us to do. And then we just be Christians. Sharon, can you take at some point a picture of all the people who are here today from upstairs? Because I'm going to put that on Facebook. And I'm going to say, this is our response to evil. We came to church. This is our response. And I thought, it's Veterans Day weekend. People died and fought so that we could be free. They are not taking my freedom. They are not going to take it. I'm coming to church. Well, not next Sunday, but I'll be back. <laughs> you know where I'm going. I will honor all of you veterans who fought for freedom. And I will be here every Sunday. And I will not let them steal my freedom. Let's pray. Father, we all came here this morning and it had to all be on our minds a little bit. The terrible things that happen in our world and we are so tempted to join in the hate. We are so tempted to sink to their level. It takes courage to rise above. I cannot imagine being 18, 19 years old and being on a battlefield, being shot at, at 19 years old. And yet these veterans went out and did that to protect the freedoms that we have. So in their honor and in their memory, I will come to church without fear. And I will come to church and I will preach and I will sing and I will declare God's graces and I'll declare Jesus till my dying breath. Because people were brave enough and courageous enough to do that for me. That's how I'll pay them back. I will live in freedom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.